Uh, so let's have another little bit of a, a look at routing again. So there's two key concepts here that we need to, to look at. So routing um, is the process by which we build the list uh, of paths that can be used uh, to get somewhere. And forwarding is the actual process of moving a packet towards its intended destination. Uh, so routing in that sense is more, you can think about it in terms of navigation uh, and map building, uh, whereas the forwarding is actually the, uh, the process uh, of using it. So a little bit like in uh, the sport orienteering, um, you, know, you, you have two processes there, right? One is looking at the map to work out the best way to get places. And then that's separate from you actually walking uh, to get there. So it's the same thing here uh, in the computer networks. Oops. So we can have a forwarding table and we can have a routing table. Uh, so a forwarding table um, has the information that's required to, uh, to do the forwarding. And it contains the mapping number uh, for the particular interface that's concerned and the network uh, number. Uh, and it will contain the information of uh, where to get to the next hop. So typically that will be the physical layer address uh, where to send the, the, um, uh, the packets to. The routing table, on the other hand, is built by the routing algorithm and is actually used to contain, uh, used to generate rather the forwarding table. So the forwarding table is the implementation of the navigational information on the network that the routing table generates. So the routing table uh, is concerned more about the network numbers uh, and uh, the IP address of the routers uh, as it kind of uh, progresses through. Uh, and then the forwarding table is actually implementing that saying, okay, so what is the physical layer address to which I need to send to and on which interface should I send it? So it's instantiating the routing information from the routing table into uh, a very pragmatic forwarding table that can be uh, interpreted very efficiently. So again, if we look at uh, an example from the routing table, so we have the network uh, number here uh, in CIDR format, uh, so the classless internet domain routing, and it says the next hop is this IP address. The forwarding table then actually takes that and looks at the set of interfaces that the host has and says, okay, to get to that IP address, that IP address has a MAC address of this, and it's reachable on this network interface that's physically connected to the computer. So it's instantiating, as we said, the, uh, the navigational information provided by the routing table to become a forwarding table. So if we think more generally about routing then, uh, so the network is a graph. There are typically redundant links throughout the internet uh, in different places. Uh, and the problem really is to find the cheapest way uh, to get between two nodes. And when we say cheapest or lowest cost, um, there can be a variety of ways to measure that cost. It might be saying that the cost is how long it will take, uh, or it might be an actual physical cost. If you're using a cellular network, for example, you may be paying per uh, megabyte or gigabyte of data sent. And you might, for example, also have uh, a DSL connection uh, that's cheaper per gigabyte to use. And so, uh, you know, the, the cost minimized path would be to use a DSL link where that's possible. Uh, so for simple networks, we can do this quite, uh, you know, we, we can do a, if you like a, a brute force uh, approach and calculate all of the shortest paths or all the cheapest paths and just store them permanently uh, in some non-volatile manner uh, on each node. So this is, then when you boot the machine up, it doesn't need to get any information uh, because it's already there, it's statically stored. Unfortunately, if you do it statically, uh, any changes that happen to the network uh, won't get noticed by this. Uh, and so whether that's, uh, you know, nodes that fail or links that fail or adding new nodes or moving things around, um, or even if just the cost of the, uh, the different links changes, uh, it's not going to update. Um, so we want ideally a more dynamic uh, solution uh, and hopefully one that can be distributed so it doesn't need to have a central authority that has to maintain information, but that this can be uh, uh, you know, calculated in a distributed manner uh, and maintained across the internet in the, uh, a reasonably consistent manner, but without having a strict authority necessary. Um, so there's 
a couple of different approaches that are commonly used. So one is a distance vector uh, approach and the other is link state. And we'll have a look at those in the next video.